Welcome to the show with no name for uh, Friday, uh, July 26th. 26th. Are you sure? 26. I think it's the 27th. Well, if we take out a calendar, which you should have. Okay, it. we'll be uh, back with you in a moment, folks, after we decide what today Technical is. Technical difficulty. 26. That's what I thought. 26. Okay. July. All right, July 26, 2013. Yeah. Uh, what did I say? This is the show with no name. Uh, and uh, I'm Bob Going, of course, and uh, Jim Nicosia and uh, Gavin Murdoch. And we'd uh, like to welcome our uh, special guest yes. today, the late President Ronald Reagan, uh, who, will, uh, who we're just showing off today, what will probably become part of our uh, permanent uh, indoor studio in the, in the Fultman studio. But he wasn't late tonight. He was here before we were. That's true. He was here before you were. Not he wasn't here before I was. Uh, anyway, we haven't uh, we haven't done a podcast in what about three weeks now because uh, because of the heat. At least three weeks. Heat and vacations yeah, yeah. and touring. And yeah, yeah. It's been a slow summer. Absenteeism. So. Uh, <laughs> So uh, you guys, uh, you guys did the radio show without me the other day. Uh, yeah. uh, I was uh, stuck up in Fonda uh, mm. arguing a case uh, that came up at the last minute. So were you successful in your argument? Well, I don't know. Uh, no decision has been rendered yet. There's more time to submit papers, uh, but I, I would say that my argument was uh, was arguably. an excellent. One. Arguably, it was at least arguable. <laughs> yeah. So. And uh, it wasn't even for me. I was filling in for for another lawyer, but that's. Uh, I think I, think I uh, earned my keep. That's good important. Yep. It's what counts. Do a good job, and I'll invite but you I, back But I, you know, I hate it when they're scheduled at the same time as my radio show, and I kept saying, you guys don't mind if I sub just submit the papers here, do you? Said, well, I, 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 you know, he's doing it for somebody else. You'd pay more attention to yeah, it if you it for yeah. yourself. So I, I stayed, and I uh, managed to get out about, in about 10 of, uh, 10 of 11. Ah. So I'm driving home from Fonda and uh, picked up the tail end of the show and uh, you guys were having trouble getting people to call in there for a while. Yeah. Huh? Yes. Yeah. They were more content listening to the, uh, the, the authoritative voices and, and the, uh, the political yeah. correctness of the show rather than coming in and trying to make a, a lazy yeah. argument. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. So. didn't have much chance. Well, we have uh, nine minutes to go in the show. Uh, we have uh, eight minutes and 45 seconds uh, left in the show. Yeah. Mar Mary, Mary said uh, she particularly liked the show because uh, she's never heard the whole musical piece, uh, the, the theme song before. Uh, yeah, Mike, Mike found it for us and put it on. Well, uh, if I'm a little ragged today, it's because I, uh, I was dragging all the furniture out here for our out outdoor studio that uh, son James uh, built for us last year. Uh, James is in Iceland. I saw the pictures. It was cold water, I guess, he jumped into. Oh, huh? 34 degrees, he said. Uh, yeah. That's cool. That's uh, our temperature, not yeah. European temperature. Uh, yeah, and and I noticed everybody on the shore was wearing a dry suit and, uh, and kind of chuckling <laughs> while he was... Taking the plunge. Crazy, how long is he going? Crazy American. How long is he going to be there for? Uh, I I think he's he, he's got to be leaving. Yeah, I guess he was doing two weeks in in uh, Iceland and then he's uh, and a couple of weeks in Sweden before the before the uh, Ironman, which is on August seventeenth, and then. Uh, from there, he's going to uh, he's got a, a year rail pass, and he's uh, going to be going to the farthest point in Norway that you can get to by rail. He chose not to go to Spain on your rail, which might have been a good choice. Oh uh, yeah, well, yeah, he was in no hurry. Yeah, yeah, it's apparent. I think there's an Ironman Ironman this weekend, isn't there? Yeah, Lake Placid. Yeah, Lake Placid with the, mm -hmm. the local. Couple yeah, of I local think. Uh, in fact, I think Judge Seiss said he's uh, going to be in it uh, yeah. this year, I believe. Size and he's done that before. It? His uh, his uh, brother-in-law kind of got him into that. His brother-in-law was an Ironman, uh, I think, before Joe even started huh. triathleting. Uh, yeah. So there you go. You know, to uh, get rid of the, the I'm not ready for part, that. I, I, I think I would try to do it if they didn't have that swimming part in it. It just takes so long to dog paddle these distances. It, yeah. Yeah, the swimming part and the bicycling was would do me in and maybe half the running. <laughs> maybe half the running, they, they finish with a marathon. <laughs> uh, 
you know, Jamie was a uh, you know, long distance runner in, uh, at Amsterdam High. He did cross country and then he, he would do the longer runs in the, uh, mm -hmm. in the uh, track and field. That's Chip the Wonder Dog in the background, by the way. Uh, the official dog of the show with no name. Uh, but uh, he, he decided to join the triathlon club uh, when he went to RIT. In fact, became president of it pretty quickly. Uh, but he didn't, he really wasn't a swimmer. He had never taken swimming lessons and, and such. He turns out to be a world-class swimmer. He's, he's a terrific swimmer. And he, but he, you know, he stuck to it and he, he apparently got some good guidance good, good teacher. Uh, along the way. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, boy, one of, I think one of his teachers down in, uh, one, of the, one of his coaches down in Louisiana, uh, you know, thought he was you know, he should be uh, swimming competitively uh, as opposed to doing the tri triathlon. Now, you, know, you never know until you, until you do it. And, uh, and when he did his first Ironman in Zurich, he kind of held back because he'd never swum that far before, 2.2 miles in, in one setting. Mm -hmm. Uh, in, in all the training, they never have you do the full distance. They just right. get your body ready to respond. Mm -hmm. uh, so he held back and ended up in the top 10 percent of all the uh, all the Ironmen who were competing, uh, which is that's, that's, which is astonishing. That is. Uh, the bike is a really unfair part of the triathlon. Or, Why? Or, or, because. Uh, because you can get terrific advantages uh, uh, by the amount of money you have, as opposed to the amount of skill you have. Buy a better bike, though. You buy a better bike, better you bike. get you get better wind resistance and uh, you know better forward motion. You know, you, well, I don't know if they have automatic or, or stick shift. I don't know how they do that. But. <laughs> They're lightweight. They're, they're I think some of them. Are, I think some of them maybe may have automatic clutches. I'm not sure. Uh, uh, but the really expensive bikes are really expensive. I mean, you and I might, you know, at this stage in our career, spend a hundred bucks on a bicycle. But uh, yeah, yeah, these guys spend thousands. Least, yeah, many thousands. Thousands. Many thousands. Six, seven, eight thousand dollars for a bicycle. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's right. I don't want to spend that much for a car. Never My parents spent eight thousand dollars for their you first house. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, My first house is only five grand. There you go. Still, first and only house. <laughs> and you still got it. I still got it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So what did you guys talk about Tuesday? Was, was there... Well, we started off with uh, uh, Martin and uh, Zimmerman. Trayvon Martin. Talked really? About him. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we talked about something else. What did we talk about after that? Uh, talked about the, the mayor. The mayor. You talk about what? The mayor. The mayor. What about the mayor? Well, the, the lady that's in, in charge down there. That yeah. That one down. That woman at City Hall. What about her? What about her? That's oh, what we're trying the, to figure out. There, there are some issues about the, the utilization of the, uh, the parks in the community. The parks and the uh, golf course. And, and the, the golf course, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we did a little bit of Obamacare or lack of care by Obama. Uh, well, definitely, it's definitely lack of foresight for sure. Yeah. But uh, the official yeah. wife of the show with no name is lurking in the background she, here. She's, huh? What? Oh, okay. No, she isn't. No, she's not. She's, she's not. Make believe she's not there. Just okay. kidding. Just kidding. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. We, we talked a little bit about how, how when in the Constitution it specifically states that you cannot ignore a law, you have to enforce the law. You take an oath to. to enforce the laws. Yeah. And he has decided, well, we don't have to now at this point in time. Well, uh, they're, they're going to probably wait it out so that it doesn't hurt their... Uh, their candidates during the next election. And we figured uh, that that was the same tax that the, the city administration is take, taking. <laughs> okay, yeah. so here's something that's popped up, I, I think, since you guys were on uh, uh, regarding City Hall. Now, uh, Ron Wiersbicki passed away, when did, uh, December or something December. like that? Uh, he's been gone ever, uh, you know, gone all the time. But uh, they, they uh, sort of replaced him mm -hmm. with a, uh, by paying a, a, a substantially paid deputy who was uh, going to be straightening everything out. Correct. 
Now I see in the paper the other day that the AUD from last year hasn't been filed, been filed yet. yet. It was due last uh, November 1st, I believe. There are 60, 60 uh, June, mistakes, did they say? Yeah. 60 mistakes in the in the, in the, the U, UAD and the, they're trying to straighten them out. October 1st. 60 yeah, mistakes. Yeah. Well, what does that mean? Uh, who made the mistakes? Whoever's making out the... Well, that's him! <laughs> <laughs> well, I... I I forget the wording they used. Was, the fact is, it was clever. The fact is, we're almost, uh, you know, we're we're starting yet another fiscal year, and we don't even know what our fund balance was from last fiscal it's, year. It's substantial. Two years. It's substantial. That's what she said. It's yeah. substantial. How do you know that? Well, on the basis of what? Well, on the they haven't balanced the books. They don't have to because they've borrowed so much money in the past two years that had a residual from doing the project, so now they got a lot of money left over. There's there's no accounting, and there's the no accounting. Excuse me, we for, still owe that money. Yes. But, whether we spent it or whether we didn't spend it, we still owe it, we yeah, borrowed it. But we, we, That's not fund balance. No, but we, yeah. It's, that's it's just spend, a bank account. It's spendable. It's, 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 it's taken, it's paid to the city, yeah. the city puts it in an account. Yeah. So, and they okay. say, there, see, we got right. fund balance. Oh, okay. We got a lot of money. All right. So as long as you got one side of your balance sheet on the accrual system and on the other side on the cash system, we're in great shape. That's their theory. Right? That's yeah. their theory. Holy smokes. That's their theory. It's no wonder we're a mess. Did I hear that one of the projects they're gonna be they wanna work on that they wanna borrow money for is Dove Creek? No. Yes. Yes. Uh, are you kidding me? No. Yes. They already borrowed all the money for Dove Creek well, and spent it on the Riverlink Park? Yes. 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 They they only used, from what I understand, they used very little of the money that they borrowed for the Dove Creek to do the Dove Creek. They had a lot of money left over, which was used for other projects. Because they didn't do the project. <laughs> exactly. But now, now. now they're going to borrow money to do the project again. And we have such... I'm trying to be. Is it any wonder up. people are moving out of here in droves? It's, it's so, it's so incompetent. It's so incompetent. It's well, so we got but some. It's, new, but it sold so well. well. We got some new murals, though. So. It sold so well. It's packaged in such a nice box. Got a nice ribbon. The paper is Im Gavin impeccably a, put together. Gavin's organization took a shot on the radio today. Which organization? <laughs> the school board or uh, yeah, one the, of the other? His one of the school board. <laughs> that we know the school district does no longer collect taxes at the central office. Right. Uh, they're collecting. And now at, they no longer collect them at anywhere except the Midline Road right, or, or, or right. uh, wait, Perth Road. Wait, I got my first taxes. Night, first Niagara. I got my taxes. And I, I think it was two days after I got them. I said, well, let me go pay them. And I knew I had to bring them up to Maple Avenue. So I go in and there's a sign. You can now you can now pay taxes on Division Street and Five Corners Bank. What? I, I saw just the opposite Wait. sign the other day down on Division Street. So that's that's what I'm getting at. Oh. And now a week later, <laughs> a week later, there's signs saying you can't pay them down right, there. Right. And they they said there was there was a long line on Maple Avenue, so they put a sign up saying you can go down there to pay them. Even, right. even though they, they weren't taking them. No, they were, at, they were taking them at the time. Oh, they were. They were taking yeah. them that, that day. That makes no sense. Because yeah. they, they, they don't want to take them, First Niagara. Okay, so First Niagara wants to get out of the business. They're trying to get well, out. Well, I noticed they, they, they had a sign up also about the, uh, the city and county taxes as well, that they're not taking those. They can only pay them at City Hall now? I believe that is correct as yes, well. Yes, that's right. The, the banks don't want it because they, they, they think it ties up one of their employees too much to collect the taxes so they're they're trying to get out of it and eventually what's going to happen is you're going to have to pay them uh send them in by by check you got to send it to rochester right well uh the uh first niagara was not getting paid to do this right they got they, they made their money on the uh on the money we have on, uh, on the, the spread on the accounts that we have with them yeah yeah because they would hold the hold the money and, and then turn it over, know. right? And and the other banks, because it, it can't it can't be a savings bank; it has to be a commercial bank that does the collecting, and nobody wants to do it. 
So. Well, then they ought to put it out for bids and see uh, see what could, they can do because we, because we can't afford to. Uh, uh, we, we pay the employees a lot more than the bank pays the employees. They sent it to Rochester. That's who they're paying to do it. Rochester? Yeah. yeah. Who's in Rochester? Uh, lockbox. Up there. A, a collection agency in Rochester. You've got to sit. So you... You can't pay. You've got to spend 40, 47 cents All right. for a stamp right. to send it up to Rochester. And hopefully it doesn't get lost. Yeah, and hopefully they credit it to your account. Yeah. If it gets and hopefully you get it stamped and, uh, and, and returned manner. to you. Yeah. yeah. So that's 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 that was. So it's, it costs you an extra forty-one cents. Why don't tack it onto my bill? That sounds like an e easy way to commit fraud. Take it, tack it on my bill, and say, okay, for every every uh, tax that you you accept, you'll get forty-one cents. <sighs> How much are they paying that guy to take a? I don't know what they're... But you're on the board. Yeah. I don't know the amount of every account on the board. <laughs> well, see, see, there we go. That's... <laughs> okay, so what happens if First Niagara says to the school district, uh, we're not doing this anymore? Then you have to hire somebody to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And that would, now, be, that, that would be more than the Hey, you know what? This is the 21st century. Why yes. aren't we paying the, ta paying the taxes online? You, you can. You can. You can. you can. How's that? How do you do that? Well, you got to have a credit card. Or a PayPal well, that's account. that's okay. Or, or but there's a lot of people who don't have access to that. Oh, I understand that. I'm just thinking if you can yeah. get the bulk of it out of the way. I mean, that, that's, that's one of the things. You, you, I was up there Friday when part of the nonsense was going on. There was a couple of um, senior citizens there that were waiting and waiting. And the sign says cash. No. Cashed means dollar bills, ten dollar bills, twenty dollar bills, whatever. Didn't say cash or check. It doesn't. No, it says cash. Sure. It doesn't say cash or check. But they're taking checks. <laughs> yeah. Well, right. maybe that's considered cash. Yeah. But uh, it's it's uh, it's just not convenient. I mean, of all the bill the branches that say that's where you have to go, that's the least convenient one. Okay. Well, right. I mean, uh, for everybody. I mean, it, it's, yeah, absolutely. it's 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 the furthest. I was removed. about to say it's, it's about as far as you can go and still remain within the school, school district. district. Yeah. Right. Right. And I mentioned at the board the other night, but well, that, maybe that's, that's the whole idea. Uh, the bank is trying to make it inconvenient enough to, uh, that to say, well, we're not going to bother with it, and bother. they'll have to come up with something else. So. Probably the most convenient. Well, probably the most convenient bank is. Uh, Four corners. Is, Five uh, corners. Uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah, exactly. Re yeah, I was going to say Reed Street. Yeah. Uh -huh. But there was some good news at the board meeting. We did get a grant for $3.8 million. For that one was build, nice. For, for one, one because that's a building in, oh, that's in all right. Reed. That's all right. And that's right. Uh, that's right. You probably uh, spend more in that building than any of the other elementary schools, the, I would think. The, right? the central, build, central administration is going to move up to Bacon. That's not, that's not correct. It's what? what it says was is they're they're looking to determine whether or not we can move up there and make the necessary improvements up there because you get any building you do that has children in is aidable you get, get money to do it yeah. so they're looking to do that because there's a lot of work that needs to be done at the central office right now and that would be all out of either bonded or from the um, the general fund so they're they're they're, they're going to do a they're going to have Mike Rico and uh, Mosaics, our architects, to go up there and see exactly what the cost would be on that building to bring it up to code to be able to have all the offices and all the things up there. Up there, so they have. Well, you know, if you're, if, if you know, if you're looking for new space, uh, let me recommend 100 Church Street because there's a lot of great space with uh, great communications built that into would, it. That would cost them. Wow. Extra. Yeah, perhaps. That's why they don't want to pay somebody to, to accept your taxes because yeah. they'd have to pay well, what, somebody. Well, what would you do with the central building uh, at that point? Well, we bought it for a dollar. No, I realize that. So they uh, have to put it on the market, sell it, or... Yeah, in other words, you would, you would vacate it entirely, not yes. use it for warehousing space yes, or no. anything? No. Uh, no. That's one of the issues down there, that it does, uh, the basement does attract water. Yeah, and they've had, it, and that's where they keep all, all the storage is downstairs in the basement. And the radio said that they have terrific storage in the cellar. They have a lot of it, but it's problematic because it gets yeah. wet. They yeah. also have a problem with the roof. 
So yeah. you're getting it from both ends, because that's, right. you know, that was the MCM print before we got it in yeah. the 70s, and that was old when we got it. Yeah. So they're, they're, they're looking, they, if yeah, they have to move that, up the that. Before that, the Central Administration was down at the junior high, right? Yeah, it was in back of the junior high. Yeah. Yeah, the old post office. Right. Down there. So they're, 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 they're looking. If they move, where would it go? They'd probably end up going to Bacon, because there's enough room in there that they could do it, but they have to do a lot of renovation up there does that in order to do that. Does that mean the superintendent gets another raise? I don't think so. I think by time he, by time this gets accomplished, he'll be out. Uh, well, yeah, you know, he's getting another raise. He's going to retire. No, he's going to retire without a raise. No, he wasn't going to retire without the raise. So uh, let me ask you about this board meeting the other night. Was uh, uh, was the recorder exaggerating, or uh, were Dr. Bush's eyes really popping out of her head? She was shocked. <laughs> She was shocked because we didn't we didn't know that was coming. It wasn't in our board pack. It was something that was presented at the table. Oh, by the way. Oh, by yeah. And here's the letters telling us how much we uh, what we got. And and we and uh, Santa Barbara gave us a check for seventy five thousand dollars. Was it seventy five? Yeah, that was from his uh, leftover monies. His what do they call that? Discretionary That's, uh, monies or uh, Lulu's? His Lulu's. That's Lulu. Yeah. Oh no. Oh. I guess uh, we got a customer. Got a customer. All right. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. You're getting served. Huh? You're getting served. I know. Yeah. This just looks like uh, service with a smile. <laughs> Thank you. Good. How's everything? Good. 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 Okay. All righty. Yep. Thank you. Well, okay, you guys keep talking while I see uh, what this is. So anyway, yeah, but they, she was very surprised we got it. It's a three-year grant, and the money is... Did they has, do that purposely to spring it on everybody, surprise everybody? That no, they, no, they had just gotten it. Uh, yeah. They originally had gotten turned down for it, and they, re, uh, yeah. and they resubmitted it after the uh, concerns were met, and they, uh, they, they got it. So it's three years. Uh, it involves um, personnel programming and they can also do um, some um, the majority, refurbishing of uh, the of, majority uh, of it was for personnel yeah and, and so it can be used for refurbishing uh, Tecla because that's the yeah, but building see, in the least good condition I, see that's the part I don't like it's for personnel for language coach this kind of coach yeah. this kind of coach and after the three years who pays those coaches they will reapply for the grant. If it doesn't come through, then it's up to the the, the, board. the, the board administration whether or not the things have been added or things we want to sustain or not. Well, the, the way things go, once it's instituted, it hardly ever goes away, even though the funding goes away. Many times you are correct. You are correct. Majority of the time. So, well, we'll see if the... That's why that's why many people vote against accepting some of these programs. Mm -hmm. Even though it's a, a three-year thing, it's a lot of money for three years. But after three, three years, years where, where's that million dollars going to come I'm from? from. Yeah, it can be a whole lot of things. And they and in the past, it's I would have to say it's been a mixed bag where they have retained some of those things, and other times they've they, they've cut money run off funding. But well, we'll have to see because we haven't started it and got to see what kind of change it actually brings to Techler. Uh, they're our most challenged school right now and they're the ones that need to be doing things differently and more effectively. How many students at Techler now? Well, four something. Mm. Four something. You know, they, they still have uh, those Hauserman walls. They also have some rooms that have no walls up there. They never. Those are the open classrooms? Yeah, exactly. Well, that's Bacon was open classrooms, too. Yeah. Removable, the high or movable the rooms. Right? High school was, too. Was it? I, yeah, when they built that was right in the middle of that that philosophy, open schools. Schools without walls. I remember walls. Uh, uh, one, of my, one of my friends was an elementary teacher and uh, at the time that Bacon opened. And uh, the teachers thought this was insane, as did all the parents. Uh, 
uh, because you end up, you know, you're, uh, the other classroom is right inside yours. Uh, so uh, the, the I, A disruption the, in one classroom, you know. <laughs> as far as anybody can tell, the whole the whole philosophy uh, started with uh, it costs money to build walls. Uh, and then, then the philosophy follows as to why this is a great method of education. Who, who in their right mind could look at this, oh, we're smarter than you, we've been to college, you know, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you ever been in a classroom? Yeah, they're actually called classrooms. So, anyway, what she, what she told me was that immediately, Fake walls went up, uh, you know, high high bookcases, yeah, right. uh, yeah, yeah. file cabinets on top of file cabinets, uh, uh, maps. To, uh, they, yeah. So so that all the distractions, uh, so that you had walls, you, you divided walls the space, away, and before uh, you knew it, you were back to uh, wild space. And then what did they, they spend millions putting walls in uh, years later, just before yeah. they closed it? I think. Yeah, uh, but it's I never understood that. I you'd have to be a brain surgeon to see this as a real dumb idea. I, you, all you got to do is spend five minutes in any classroom to know that it's a dumb idea, right? Sure. Well, look at the high school, how big that place is. You can look from one end of the building to the other end when there was no walls up there. It was well, they ludicrous. Known, they should have known what would happen because they, they, had, they used to have two classrooms in one class. Or two classes in one classroom. Yeah. Well, right. A and B. Right. We yeah. were in that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gavin and I were in that you class. Need, you need something special. You need a special teacher and special kids. Mm -hmm. You know, it just. And there are any special ones like that anymore. How did we do that? Yeah. I, I remember one, my one son. Uh, he he failed the one grade, the one jump. Yeah. And uh, we. We didn't tell him, the teacher didn't tell him, and nobody told him because they didn't want to upset him. You didn't want to tell him he flunked? No, that, that he was, instead of going to B, he was kept in A. Oh, uh oh. So he comes home, yeah, you know something? He says, I think I'm still in the same class. <laughs> I go, yeah, you, you got the same kids, you got new got kids. The, got the same book. Yeah, so. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I realize that in education and the way things are today, we need to do things a little bit differently. But we were presented at the board meeting. The Board of Education has to approve textbooks. Right. Okay. So, and, and it has to be... It's frightening, isn't it? <laughs> it has to be presented to the board twice, you, which gives you a month to review the book before you make a, a decision. And one of the books we were given the other night well, the only one we were given the other night was a math book, but it was a reading math book. It was stories about numbers that they have to they they they, they have to be using now. It's called the, 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 the devils the devils the devils in the numbers or some title like that, <laughs> and it, it's something that the math teachers are going to have to use with their kids uh, because this is what the assessments are going to be based on. The tests they take are going to be similar kind of thing. So I smiled on that one. And then they presented to us three other books that are going to be used in the English classes. And I looked at, at the books and I, 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 I try not to be sarcastic in public. <laughs> except that except on our shows. That doesn't, that doesn't work too well, Gavin. And I, I picked it up and I said, absolutely, this book has been pub was published two years ago. I'm sure it's a classic, okay? I said, why are we doing this? Well, the teachers got sent to this conference and they were presented with a list of books that, uh, that the state's going to uh, re require everybody to use because it's part of the core curriculum and they may be tested on those books. I am what? Th these are fluffer nutter books, okay? You know, but they're, the, the, the state is writing the test around some very specific things. And if you don't have those things you're presenting to your classes, they aren't going to be able to do it. I, I, I said, uh, I, 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 Obviously, I guess I have to trust the professional judgment of the teachers when they choose these things, because they probably have a very limited choice. But I think this is—I think this—I think this is wrong. 
the, 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 to, be, to be doing this, you know. And we didn't, they didn't have, they hadn't even gotten the textbooks in to show us yet because they, they were, the teachers just went to a workshop last month. They were presented the stuff. They pick which one they wanted, so they do it now. They can't order the books until we approve it, which won't be approved until August. And then in September, they have to start teaching from these books. So we'll see how that goes. And I did, I did mention this is another unfunded mandate. Well, no, no, not really, because you know it's a choice. I said it's an unfunded mandate because we have a pool of things we have to pick from, and we have to pick these things, so we got to buy them. So everybody in the state's going to be reading the same, the same books, books, the same books. You know, you know what book they ought to all be reading all across the state. They ought to be reading, reading this, this book. Where do we find such men? And I, I, I spoke to our uh, social studies chair and one of the lead social studies teachers at the high school. I presented him with a copy of the book and I said, this ought to be on everybody's reading list. Okay. There you go. Because one of the things they're doing is that they want a, a variety of books because you read each book for a different purpose. You're reading it for facts. You're reading for philosophy. You're reading it to comprehend the bigger issues in life, you know? I, I think this book could cover a number of genres uh, if, if it were used. But the last time I was any place where everybody had to read exactly the same thing, I was about 3,000 miles away in the former Soviet Union because every school in the former Soviet Union read exactly the same book at exactly the same time of each school year and maybe, it was taught exactly the same way. Maybe our education czar is from there. Why do you think he called him a czar? Uh, yeah. How come he's not education, how come he's not education president? No, 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 he's, he's a czar. He's a czar. He came from Russia. He, he, took their he, he came from a communist philosophy is where he's coming from. Oh, but I just, wow. it was just, I, I just sat there and I said, this is, this is absolutely freaking lutely nuts that we're, 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 we're getting to that point, you know. The more they want you to do, the more restricted what they want you to do is, you know. And is anybody, you know, what do we got? Three people making decisions for the whole country when you get right down to it? Because now with this core curriculum of the state that used to set all the standards is now just taking their cue from Washington. So what are we paying all these people in the state for to make these decisions? All they're doing is what they're told. You know how much money Hardcore Embrace is getting out of this? Oh, yeah. well, when you have to change the books every two years, uh, the, and, uh, you can't, you can't and, miss, and Parsons right? is the ones who's making all the tests. Okay? It, it, it certainly smacks of Crony collusion. capitalism. Co crony capitalism or collusion. Yeah. Absolutely. I just, uh, you know, wh when I was teaching, the, the, the state, every 10 years the state goes through a different philosophical perception on education. And when I was teaching at the high school, we were going through where kids had to learn to think more critically. They had to be able to draw comparisons and, and contrast. They had to understand it in a different way questions and information. And I got thinking, which I don't often do, but I did at this point, and I said, you know, Really, the questions that we were asked when we were in school really aren't a whole lot different than what these kids are being asked. But the difference is we had information and facts that we knew to utilize in developing our con con comprehension of comparing and contrasting and, and, and different philosophies and, and different perspectives. Now, they're just teaching you how to do these things without giving you the bits of information to use in your essays. They have nothing to compare because that's not the emphasis is on Every a process. Every essay answer requires at least two facts, Sister Gertrude Joseph. Yes. And you know what? These kids don't have two facts, but they know they have to have two something. They just don't know what the facts are, are, are to use. You know, we didn't, we didn't sit down in, in, in the class and, and do a, a critical analysis of um, Red Badge of Courage and All Quiet on the Western Front. But we could have because we had read those books and we knew what Actually, was in them. Uh, and we could I specifically remember uh, doing that on the Red Badge of Courage. And, 
and, and the teacher thought I was being a smart ass uh, because I, uh, uh, I, 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 I wrote it in a somewhat comical way, but I, 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 I saved that paper because I still think I made exactly the right points. I just made it in a, made it in a humorous way. And yeah. there's nothing wrong with the humor. About the, I, I remember about the, uh, the mother warning the youth uh, about uh, the, you know, getting involved in dirty, terrible things that soldiers do. Uh, you know, drinking and gambling and mm -hmm. women and, and all that and smoking and all that stuff. And I haven't, uh, heard, I haven't heard anything terrible yet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, oh yeah. Well, and, and then uh, then you know, I followed that up with a quote from the book. Uh, uh, I'll I'll bid five, uh, raise your raise your two. You know, uh, <laughs> you know whatever. But, but I, I, it just it, you know they're they're going about this for lack of a better expression, half ass backwards. You know, you, you have to know something in order to use what you know. Right. Because if you don't have anything to use, right. you're, you're useless. And that's that's what it has become. Because you know, as I taught, I could see following the curriculum that we were given, there was less and less important facts and understandings that the kids were acquiring. They pick very broad things that are very shallow as opposed to a few things very deep. Because you have the, the, the depth you have something to utilize. If you have a lot of shallow, there's nothing there to bring into an argument. I was in uh, Barnes & Noble the other day. Uh, uh, Dan Brown, who sells more books than I do, uh, has, uh, has got uh, a, a, a new uh, thriller out uh, that has something to do with Dante's Divine Comedy. I forget what the title of his book is. Mm -hmm. uh, Suddenly, you know, one of the number one books being sold is Dante's Divine Comedy, which was written in, in what, the 15th right. century, 14th century, something like that. Yeah, because they want to see what they've been missing. Yeah. What are you looking at? You're... I just checking. Oh, well, let me see. I can't. I can't read this. Oh, well, we are only 37 minutes and 10 seconds no. into the show. All right. Yeah. So it, it just it just, the way of education is is going the wrong way. It, it really is. Uh, I, I look at what Misha brings home and it's, it's nice and he does a good job on it, but it's certainly nothing that, w that we did. I think I, I, I think I told you about uh, meeting uh, uh, Dutch Kirk, who is uh, the last surviving member of the uh, Enola Gay crew. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who don't know your history, the Enola Gay dropped a bomb on Hiroshima, which ultimately led to the end of World War II. Did the bomb II have War. a name? Uh, yeah, but I don't remember whether it was Little Boy or... Uh, I, I don't remember. Was it Little Boy? Yeah. I think it was Little Boy. They had the two bombs, and one, one was a plutonium bomb and one was a uranium bomb, and I forget which is which. See, I don't know my history, and I, and I wrote that one. Uh, there was a fellow from Canada, Harry, who accompanied the bomb uh, to the West Coast, however. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he didn't know it at the time. He finally found out later. Was the Enola Gay a type of a airplane bomb? It, was it a what? Was it, was it, was it a type of airplane? like a Well, no, Nola, Enola Gay flight? was uh, the mother of yeah. Colonel uh, Tibbetts, who was, the, uh, who was the commander of the flight. And uh, it was a B-29 uh, uh, Stratofortress, I believe, that was stripped down to uh, carry the extra weight of the bomb and to, uh, and to move away quickly at a very steep angle. Oh, then I, I can deduce from that that the pilot named the plane. The pilot named the plane, which is what they always did in those days. Very interesting point. Who knew that? Yeah. Anybody of our generation knew that? How many of you folks out there know that? Not many. Go ahead, Bob. <laughs> Which brings us to a local point, one of these things I kind of discovered in the, in the course of my research, or, or I conclude, I, it, it, it's not definite, but uh, uh, one of the gimmicks they used uh, in these bond drives is to set a goal of X hundred thousand dollars, which would, uh, which would enable uh, the government to purchase uh, a B-17 bomber for Europe. Uh, and uh, and uh, the folks uh, folks in Amsterdam quickly exceeded their goal uh, uh, to build the city of Amsterdam uh, a B-17 bomber. So I I, I, uh, 
I, I wrote to one of my friends who's in uh, actually works for Military History Magazine, one of my college friends, and I said, that, "Do you have any research available? That whatever happened to the to the city of Amsterdam?" And uh, he writes back, "There's you know essentially no such listing." You know, you're you're familiar with the Memphis Bell yeah. and, uh, and 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 things like right? You yeah. know, famous airplanes and they know again. So then, real you know, it's coming to me that wait a minute, the captains are naming the planes, the captains of the ship right. of, the, of the airships are naming the planes. So what I've concluded is that there is a there was a fellow at uh, at Boeing whose job was to paint city of Amsterdam, city of Troy, city of Schenectady. Take a picture, send it to the hometown newspaper, and the plane was going off to fight the war, which I'm sure it was. But they just they just spray painted over it and uh, and put a new name on it the next day. The next picture. So the Polish Avenger of Amsterdam uh, 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 is is no longer there. There uh, there were, there were two Polish uh, uh, Amsterdam planes as well. It was raised uh, strictly on the hill. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, incredible amounts of money. They, now, just think, in those days, most of the Polish people were immigrants or, or second generation yeah. working in the mills, right? They, they came up with like $750,000 just in the, in the bomber drive. 750000 it was like all, uh, everybody was sending 10% of their money to, uh, uh, to buy bonds. Uh, that's how... Incredible! The, the amount of money raised here, it, you can't believe. Now half of it came from the bank. The bank, the bank bought uh, the uh, Amsterdam Federal Savings and Loan. Yeah. Uh, 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 matched every dollar that was raised, but still, holy cut crap, that in half and still a whole lot of money. That's a lot of money. How would uh, you know? We're talking in neighborhoods. They were raising four hundred thousand dollars. What? You couldn't do that today. No. You, you know, look, at, look at uh, what's a community chest or what do they go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't raise that kind of money. And then they would, then they would have the Red Cross drives. They would have the community chest drives and everything, everything else. It was uh, n nobody spent any money on them. Well, maybe it's because there was nothing to spend it on yeah. in the war. But wow. wow. So, did you ever find out who the pilot of the? Of the City of Amsterdam was the end of the last name of it. Oh no, no, no! There's no answer to that. I, I, I the whole thing was fake. Is my conclusion. Well, they, they anyway. Oh, I, you know, I, I, started telling the Dutch Kirk story for a reason. Okay. So, so he was a very interesting guy. He's, he's when I saw him a couple of years ago, he's totally with it. I mean, he's you know he's uh, considering how old he must be. Uh, he was a navigator. Anyway. So. He does a lot of public appearances, so he, he, he's, uh, he was asked to go and give a talk at a local high school or serve on a panel or something, and, and, the, and the teacher gets up and uh, introduces him, and uh, this is, uh, I forget what his real first name is, it's a Dutch Kirk, uh, and uh, he was on the uh, airplane, the Enola Gay, and he's a veteran of World War XI. <laughs> <laughs> Oops! So much for no. Just reading history. it off the page. <laughs> WWII. WWII. World War Eleven. <laughs> oh. Can you imagine? Oh, God. No. That's pretty sad. That is more than sad. This was the teacher. We're not talking about. This is just. Uh, uh, you know, the Average. secretary of the PTA. This was the teacher. Oh, gosh. Amazing. That's why we really need to read my book. Where do we find such men? Available at the uh, Five Corners uh, uh, at, uh, at the Peddler's Wagon and uh, downtown at uh, the Book Count and also on Amazon.com. And these men all fought in World War II, World which is War nine II. wars prior to World War Eleven. That's right. That's right. Boy. Uh, <laughs> so I'm, also at Barnes and Noble, I picked up a great bargain. Uh, they had a three 
quality paperback uh, set of Stephen Ambrose's World War II books, uh, D-Day, Citizen Soldiers, and the Band of Brothers. Twelve ninety-five, I think. Wow. Four bucks a book. Plus, I had Mary's twenty percent discount. I ended they they ended up paying me. I think by the time <laughs> I was done. Uh. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I've been reading D-Day. Uh, I've always been particularly interested in D-Day, and I sort of think I actually read this book when it came out, although not much of it was it leaped out at me as, uh, as being familiar. particularly familiar, but I'm pretty sure I did. Uh, but now, you know, having done my own research and, uh, and knowing where our guys were on D-Day, it, it gives it a whole different perspective. And let me tell you, uh, Richie Dantini, who was already way up uh, in my pantheon of local heroes, 18 years old, and he was, you know, like the third guy. Well, he's like the third guy out of the first first landing craft at Omaha Beach, and uh, only the second one to not get shot before he hit the water. Uh, uh, my God, what a nightmare that was! And yet. You know, 400 pages later, you realize that uh, 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 however much chaos there was at Omaha Beach, however much slaughter there was, in six hours, they had already won the battle. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there were, the, 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 a lot of a lot of guys were dead. A lot of guys were maimed. But yeah, but again, it. the the. They attacked probably the best defended spot uh, they could have attacked. On and, the Atlantic Wall, yes, they and, did. And, and they still managed to overcome it in six hours. And, and, and look how differently the other beaches fared. You know, the, the, well, Utah, they just walked ashore. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's nothing. You know, it's funny. Uh, I, I, I knew that they had landed in the wrong place on Utah Beach. They were like you know, a kilometer off. Uh, which is a fair distance. Uh, what I didn't know was they actually landed where the Army wanted to land in the first place, and the Navy said, you can't do it, it's too shallow. <laughs> it worked out just fine. And it worked out just fine, you know. And, uh, you know, they're looking at they're looking at the landmarks and the and uh, realize that, the, that, that this house is supposed to be way to our left and it's way to our right. Uh, so they, they knew they were in the wrong place, and uh, uh, and General Teddy Roosevelt just uh, threw away the plans, and he said, "We'll start the war from here." <laughs> AKA Henry Fonda. Yeah. PBS is, uh, is having 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 a series on World War II uh, over the next couple of weeks. Uh, the one they had on this week, actually, it was last week. I just watched it this week. Uh, they called it um, uh, D-Day in 3D, in three dimensions, and oh, it was wonderful. Uh, the one, and the one they had on. Uh, oh, I this saw week, one the said the other night about the about the Penamood. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I saw. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah, and and how they they had sent all these um, spy planes in, taking these these 3D pictures, and they bring them back and. Hour after hour, the, the technicians had to look in there because by having a 3D ticket, they could see see exactly what's there. It was, uh, it no was longer, astonishing. It was astonishing even watching it on television. The equipment they had, you know, it's so antiquated, but it was so good. And how they ran out, they only had a couple of machines they had to get the other, they had to smuggle the, the other two out of Switzerland right. to get it to uh, England so they could, right. they could use it. It's just uh, through Switzerland, through Germany, and Denmark. <laughs> You know, the programs they've had on the last several years really show a whole different part of the war yeah. and how it was, how it well, played Well, they're, they're revealing the secrets it's, now. And the interesting to, thing to me about that was they really weren't three-dimensional pictures. They were... Stereos. They, 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 were, they were not filmed in stereo. They just had two identical, identical. shots that were slightly right. uh, slightly right. apart, and then they created the stereo. When you, when you, when you look through the, the, the glasses uh, there, it was uh, amazing. Uh, and, then they, and then they were able to, from the pictures, build a scale model yeah. there to show and to take to 
Churchill. Wait a minute, let's go, let's go back and look at this picture from three years ago. Oh my God, that's a rocket sitting yeah. there. And they missed it. You yeah. Know, the first, uh, yeah. And because they didn't know what a rocket was supposed to look like. Yeah. Well, you know, and uh, it, but it really, the series has been been terrific. And you know, the military channel from time to time has something new on. It's just, uh, it's so much. You know, the war wasn't just guys out there shooting, and we're gonna go someplace else and shoot. There was the, the organization of it. The you know, the the planning that you you n have never seen in any of the programs. You know, for years growing up, we we got uh, Reader's Digest at home, and they always had the humor in uniform. Mm-hmm. And I remember thinking to myself, probably 40 years ago, uh, I wonder when the last humorous story from World War II is going to be told. Because it's, it's just like every month, there was like a dozen more World War II uh, mm -hmm. humor stories. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they're probably still telling them. Yes, yes, they will. And there was an article in the paper that they... Uh, found and identified another body from World War II, yeah. Yeah. Another, another pilot. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, you're going to you're going to see a whole lot more stories like that coming out because uh, uh, you know, I I have my sources that uh, contacted me uh, about uh, about this and uh, They've uh, they've actually identified now a lot of bodies uh, through DNA that they w were not able to uh, before, including uh, one local guy who, uh, if they bring him back here, that's going to be one hell of a funeral. That's, a, that's all I'm going to say. Uh, but they have identified him. They just haven't announced it yet. Yeah, the guy they found, I think it's from Albany. Yeah. That, that's coming back. Well, something like... Uh, it was an incredible percentage, like 25% of uh, the men killed at Pearl Harbor have never been properly identified. It just, everything was happening so fast, they were just, uh, the war hadn't started yet, they hadn't really gotten into the swing of things, how to deal with casualties on that scale, and uh, they just... Grab they knew who, who was dead, they knew who was missing, they, they didn't just know didn't they know uh, which one was Fred. Yeah. You know? uh, and they kept that a secret until the war was over and there were, all the bodies were starting to be shipped home and they said, well, uh, Might I him. know we told you that we knew where he was, but in fact we didn't, you know. Uh, and uh, I've read other stories recently. That, I mean, there are actually groups going around trying to find, uh, mm -hmm. uh, like in uh, some of the South Sea Islands, uh, you know, they, they, they find the old maps and realize that the military cemetery is now under a, a parking lot someplace, uh, which is where Hitler ended up, as I recall, right? And he ended up in, in uh, buried under some parking lot in East Germany. It's a, it's a handicapped parking lot, too, because I'm, sure <laughs> I'm sure he wouldn't like that, having a handicapped person park on him. Stephen Ambrose had no uh, uh, no great uh, respect for Hitler's military genius. Uh, I should point out also. Uh, well, you know, and I'm I'm not a great military historian. I'm not a great strategist. But didn't it seem pretty ludicrous to be try intentionally fighting on two fronts like he did? It, it, there, there's, it, there's a lot of insanity there, and, and, and it was, it was just arrogance. And, 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 but it was, but it, was it was even more than arrogance. It was like personal vendettas, you know. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm writing this book yeah, over and over. I'm thinking, what were either Germany or Japan thinking of declaring war on the United States? We don't go into the war. They're, they they got free reign. Hitler gets established and created there, buddy up with Japan, and he might have had something going. But as independent as they acted, and, and, and Hitler, I mean, fighting the war in Russia with what he was faced with, and then trying to open up something else, it just, he was doomed for failure right. as, as soon as he did that. Right. Because he could have gotten away and, and taken care of Western Europe, pretty solid and established himself. Yeah, you, you, you really have to wonder how 
how the, the Brits could have won World War II without our active participation. Our, we had our passive participation. Obviously, yeah. we were supplying them with all kinds of material. But how do they how do they launch an invasion of Europe and they, from they where? Could, they, they uh, they, how do they uh, you know uh, the whole North African thing? You know how does that happen? You know, it doesn't happen like it did. No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't have. They would have been. They would have had to sue for peace if they wanted to survive. But, you know, they weren't. They weren't going to defeat them. You know, it, it didn't didn't happen in World War One, and it sure wasn't going to happen I mean, in what, World War Two, and it's not going to happen in World War Eleven. You know, from nineteen thirty, you know, from September of nineteen thirty nine to September of nineteen forty two, they make virtually no advance. Uh, they they. Uh, they wouldn't even have been uh, at El Alamein if the if the Italians hadn't uh, blundered. Uh, really, yeah. they wouldn't even have been involved. Yeah, they would have kept their supply route open to India and stuff like that. But how long would that have lasted? Yeah, they 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 lost Europe in 1940. North most of North Africa is either neutral or in Italian hands neutralized by the French uh, uh, neutrality and Spanish Morocco, you know. It wouldn't have happened. Yeah. It wouldn't have happened. And if the Japanese don't attack Pearl Harbor and only attack the British... We don't go in. We don't go in. What, uh, by, you know, by what... Yeah, yeah, we own the Philippines, and we can, uh, we, we we have the power to uh, intercept them, but we're not at war with them, and we're not going to war with them unless they do something stupid. They could have strangled us. So, so yeah, and then the, you know Malaysia fall. Well, what's now Malaysia, Malaya, and Singapore fall as they did. Burma falls as it did. Australia will fall without the United States there to. Uh, uh, to supply it, uh, and India falls, and then where are they? Dire straits. You know that was definitely don't want to rock the the chair on the cat's tail. Well, what are you saying? They're saying we've. Uh, let's see what it says here. Oh no, I got. Uh, okay, that's about enough for the first hour. Okay, so we settled uh, the school board, uh, the uh, AUD, and uh, World War II in this hour. There's plenty to talk about in the next hour. So uh, I'm Bob Going with uh, Jim Nicosia and Gavin Murdoch. Stay tuned wherever you found this because there'll be more of the show with no name.